<laughs> I'm a bit ticked off. You know, I've been, I've been watching the election coverage and, uh, you know, on TV and stuff. Oh, yeah, I've got a TV. <laughs> I work for CBS. They gave me one of their old ones. <laughs> and I've been watching it. It's been making me mad. And, and so tonight on the show, I'm going to talk about why it's making me mad. <laughs> so if you can't handle an angry Scotsman, <laughs> but I know you can, <laughs> then you better just flip on over. <laughs> Which actually might be the thing to do with an angry Scotsman anyway. <laughs> we have great guests tonight as well. It's a great day for America, everybody. Why? Well, um, it just is. And I just, did you, I, did you just watch uh, Barack Obama on David Letterman? I did, because this show is live. <laughs> I was just watching, I watched that show. Now listen, I don't want to, to say who uh, I, I support in this election, but when I'm watching that show, I'm thinking there is a very sexy, compassionate man. <laughs> Obama is good too, but Dave. <laughs> Not only sexy, my boss. <laughs> Find new and creative ways to suck up to people. That's what I always do. But, but I'm watching, I'm, I'm on Dave, and the presidential election is heating up. There's all sorts of controversy. You know, because Obama's been saying, you can put a pig, uh, put, uh, put, let me put a, you can put a pig anywhere you like. It's America. <laughs> put a pig over here. Are you sure? Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that in Soviet Russia. <laughs> You have to keep your pig in a commune with other pigs, but in America, pigs roam free. <laughs> now, Obama has uh, said you can put a lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. And then Republicans are like, oh, did you call Sarah Palin a pig? And they're like, that means you hate America. And the Democrats are saying, no, no, no. Republicans, you, you don't love pigs. It's a pig's right to wear lipstick. Oh, this is free, surely. Blah, 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 blah. understand is this. What, why is Barack Obama talking about uh, lipstick on a pig? Why are we talking about animals and cosmetics? Here, here's another thing I don't understand. Why is John McCain hanging around while his vice presidential candidate is up there you know, campaigning to be president? What the hell is going on? He's like, where'd you go? Isn't she pretty? Because if you watch the news, you would think that Sarah Palin is running for president. Spoiler alert. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> what happens is that the media, uh, uh, really, uh, me too, uh, yeah, I count. The media <laughs> focuses on the best looking candidates from either side, the most TV friendly people. The TV news reports, you know, are, uh, like the way this election being covered, is being covered is it's like TMZ or something. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they're covering Paris and Nicole. I, I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, 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 look at her hair and hat and everything. And I'm like, if, if Walter Cronkite could see these brain-dead morons yapping about flag pins and hairstyles, he'd turn over in his grave. Which is weird, because Cronkite is alive and well and he lives in Martha's <laughs> Vineyard, but... If he were dead, he'd be furious. <laughs> Do you know what I think it is? I think a lot of the reporters want to be as famous as the candidates they're covering. And here is my hope for this election. Anyway, my belief and my hope that the American people are smarter than the media that are meant to be serving them at this time. This is unbelievable to me. I think people want to see real solutions to real problems. And they don't really care that much if they come from the right or the left. You know, every media outlet, you know, wants you to pay attention to their agenda and their poll. But there's only one poll that matters. It's on November the 4th. Yeah. November the 4th, right? Yeah, yeah. November the 4th. Yeah. I should check. You know the other thing about, you know, when the, the, the news report showing the candidates in slow motion with their families and the children, you know? I don't care. <laughs> you show them that the candidate, and the candidates say, well, the family is off limits, you know? I mean, it's like Sarah Palin says, you know, my daughter's pregnancy, that's off limits, that's a family matter, and Barack Obama saying, yes, that's absolutely right. Well, listen, here, here's what I say. If your families are off limits, why are they on the stage? Why is there profile in People magazine of you and your damn family all over the place? The children marching around it? Shame on you, you manipulative hypocrite. <laughs> Talking to both sides. Talking to both. 
Obama, McCain, Palin, the other one. I'm talking to all of you. <laughs> I, like, I like all of the four of these candidates a lot. For comedy reasons, they can't be beat. You got your, your grizzled old veteran who's trying to win one last campaign. You got the brash rookie who inspires millions. You got the hockey mom who's governor by day, naughty librarian by night. You got... <laughs> You've got uh, Biden, who's all Biden-y there. <laughs> what, well, the point I'm trying to get is this is a very important election, this one, but you would not know it from the way it's being reported. You know, politics is covered like show business now. On the Today Show, you know, this morning, they're like, which candidate would you rather have dinner with? Here's an easy answer, none. <laughs> they're politicians. I don't want dinner with you. I don't want your friendship. Here's what I want to know. What are you going to do for this country, pal? What are you going to do? <laughs> My children! Oh. Do I have a zipper up here or something? <laughs> the news reports are either very tabloidy or they're trying to be funny, like, like Jon Stewart. You know, maybe because more and more people say they're getting their news from late night TV, which, believe me, is not a good idea. <laughs> I, like, I like The Daily Show. I like Jon Stewart. I think he does a bang up job. He does a great job. But let him do it. The rest of the TV news people take this thing seriously. This is important. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, we all of us, you two, you two ladies. <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies, we've got, we, all of us, we have a responsibility. You have to get your news from, from news sources, not just one, because they're all biased, especially the cable channels. MSNBC, very liberal, Fox News, very conservative. The Animal Planet, always meerkats, never badgers. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what bothers me is that every election year as well, you get the voter registration drives aimed at the young people. They'll rock the vote, the vote's crack a lacking. <laughs> Think the vote, you know, music the vote. Do, 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 do. Here, the vote, the vote, the vote, the vote, the vote, the vote, the vote. Are we so lost we have to be sold our own democratic right? What the hell is wrong with it? What is going on? We have to sexy up the vote for young people. Remember four years ago, Puff Diddley had that group vote or die? <laughs> then it turns out he didn't even vote himself. <laughs> Maybe he forgot what his name he registered under. Listen, here's what I would say to you. I would say, if you don't vote, you're a moron, right? If you... I know what you're saying. Well, not voting is a vote. No, it isn't. Not voting is, is just being stupid. Voting is not sexy. Voting is not hip. It is not fashionable. It's not a movie. It's not a video game. All the kids ain't doing it. Frankly, voting is a pain in the ass. But here's a word. Look it up. It is your duty to vote. The foundation in this democracy is based on free people making free choices. So, young people, if you can't take your hand out of your bag of Cheetos long enough to fill out a form, <laughs> then you can't complain when we wind up with President Sanjaya. <laughs> Listen, I'm an American. This country is, a, is at war right now. Americans in foreign lands wearing uniforms representing this country are losing their lives. Americans here in this country are losing their homes. We have two patriotic candidates, right? They both love this country. They have different ideas about what to do with it. Learn about them, read about them, question them, listen to them. Then on election day, exercise your sacred right as an American and listen to yourself. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the grumpy political edition of the show. I'm angry. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm thinking about the... Uh, yeah, I, was, I got these uh, statistics of the googly web today, and I'm, I was looking at the statistics of people who, who actually vote, and I'm thinking, 
And I'll, I'll get to those in a minute, but I'm thinking, I think a lot of people don't vote because they think they're going to have to get into a, an argument about, you know, they have to talk to other people about, you know, who they're voting for and get into the political discussion and tempers flare and people say mean things and all that bull doo-doo that you... <laughs> which is a European word for <laughs> yeah. And all that stuff about... The, and I think... I, I, I think sometimes people forget this. Um, you don't have to tell anybody who you vote for. Privacy is protected in a democracy like this. You don't, you don't have to tell uh, who you're voting for. You, it's, it's, no, it's nobody else's business. In fact, I wish a lot of people, celebrities mostly, would take advantage of the rule of privacy and shut the hell up about who you're voting for. And just vote! Just vote! I mean... It's, 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 it's so odd to me that you know, it's like, well, you should vote the way I'm voting because, you know, I'm on a sitcom. No! No, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're perfectly entitled to talk about who you vote for. Of course you are, and it's encouraged. But it's also, you know, you don't have to. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, here the, in the past two presidential elections, less than two-thirds of the eligible voters turned out of the polls. 64% in 2004 and 60%. 60% 60 <laughs> in 2000. What is that, a B? That's a B, isn't it? D. A D? A D isn't 60. Where the hell did you go to school? <laughs> a D at 60%? Is that a D? Yes. Is it really? Yes. Man, I'm really glad I dropped out of high school. I would have sucked. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Historically, if you uh, register to vote, you're more likely to vote. Here's one thing I was ashamed, uh, I was ashamed of this. Naturalized citizens. <laughs> Naturalized citizens, they vote less frequently than Americans born here. What the hell are you thinking? <laughs> uh, young adults always have the lowest percentage of any group. Um, yeah, it's always, it's you know, 57% in 2004 for 18 to 24 year olds. 57, that's a D minus? Yeah. A F? My God, you guys are tough. <laughs> more women vote, more uh, veterans vote. Uh, the highest voter percentages, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Oregon, Maine, New Hampshire, North Dakota, and Iowa. No surprises there. <laughs> Here's the thing that made me think that, though. The, the people who didn't register to vote, when they were asked why they didn't vote, they said, uh, half of them said, I'm not interested in the election, and the other half said, I'm not interested in politics. How could you be not interested in politics? If you, if you've, got, you've got to have an opinion about something. I don't you think? I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not interested in politics. Do you, do you live anywhere? Do you, do you shop anywhere? Do you drive a car? Do you put on pants? Do you leave the house at any point? Do you own the house? Do you rent the house? Do you ever uh, hope that the police will save you from something that may or may not be illegal? <laughs> Of course you're involved in politics. If you're alive, you're involved in politics. I'm just saying. Anyway, I thought I would bring out... No, please. I thought I would bring out something which I am uh, about to fill in, which I thought you might be... And all of you in the studio audience, uh, the thousands of people that make up the studio audience every night here... <laughs> this will be available to you as you leave the studio tonight, uh, and... Uh, uh, they're available in, uh, in libraries, in post offices, in, uh, in supermarkets sometimes. Uh, and I got mine. It's, uh, it's a voter registration form. And all you do is, it's kind of your IQ test to see if you can vote. <laughs> all you have to do is fill in some pretty tough questions. Name, address, <laughs> when you were born, telephone. If you have a telephone, you don't have to put telephone in. I know, it's pretty, uh, pretty lax. <laughs> you uh, don't have to put in... Uh, oh, you can put, I decline to state a political party. I would do that if I was you. You know why? Just to be ordinary. <laughs> and then you just sign it and you send it away and then you get to participate in the, in the democracy uh, that we live in. Take that, stamp collectors.
What I'm saying is, please, do me the honor of being my fellow Americans and vote. Uh, we'll be right back with the show. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? I never saw that cat thing before. <laughs> people used to ask me what I thought. You know, maybe we should put in the cat that has the scary eyes or something. They don't, people don't even talk to me anymore. They just go, oh, go on out. You're foreign. Do whatever you want. <laughs> but I'm not foreign. I'm an American. <laughs> that's what I was talking about tonight. That's what I was talking about. I think what we learned was that I was very grumpy about it. You know what started me off in all this is when I saw the figures of the amount of people who vote, I was just, I couldn't believe it. So, you know, I was, you know, I was a bit put out. I'm sorry if I was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and, or, or not inappropriate enough, depending on what you prefer. <clears throat> I could always come around to your house and be more inappropriate. That's what you should say to someone when you're going on a date. What's the dress code? Inappropriate. <laughs> or if, like, you're sending an invitation to someone, dress inappropriate. <laughs> you too, ladies. <laughs> All right, what did we learn? We learned that uh, Alice Cooper uh, broke his rib, but he's okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> we learned that voting is private. Uh, so, uh, shut up, celebrities. We learn... <laughs> Which is an interesting thing for a guy who talks to celebrities for his job to say. <laughs> Perhaps some people would mention it is, in fact, suicidal. <laughs> but then again, you may mistake me for a guy who gives a <laughs>